Continue to buy a Rogers album. Continue to buy a Rogers album. <laughs> that sounds really cool with three guitars. I gotta it's say, a, it certainly sounds a lot meatier. It's like this lovely twelve-string guitar sound. <laughs> Uh, welcome to the Weekly Song Podcast. My name is Roger Heathers, and with me, as always, my co-host, Declan Kitchener. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. And with us, occasionally, is uh, our guest. In this case, it is... Silent. <laughs> it's <It's me. laughs> the most feeble sound. <laughs> Sorry, it didn't come in on time. I was loading. I was like, it's not loading properly. Come on. We have Sammy Jonas in the hey. studio. Hey. I'm just a soundboard today. <laughs> Hello. Hello, welcome. How are you doing? I'm back. You're back. I'm more powerful than ever. <laughs> Must have been like over a year since the last time you were a yeah. guest on the show. I think, oh, no, it was like, I think it was before I think summer. Last, I think the last one, wasn't it, like the Christmas one where we all had to write in each other's styles? That's right, yeah. Yeah. Which is so a it year is, and a half, maybe? Y- yeah, just over a year and a half. Wow. Damn. Um, yeah, welcome. Um, Yay. And uh, how did you find writing a song in a week? Uh... It was good. Uh, I think, because only because I messaged you on Monday, I was like, start writing down a title for an idea, and I was like, maybe I'll just wait until the actual podcast, and be like, we give you a message, be like, do you fancy if I come on the podcast, if I write a song? You're like, oh, I, I guess. <laughs> no, <laughs> we're all comers here. Uh. Well, literally, we just finished like recording last week's podcast, and uh, just received this message, like, Sam wants to come on, so... Oh, yeah, we haven't had it. <laughs> well, we miss him. It was perfect timing, too. It was like, we finished recording. It was like, can I come on for next week? I was like, yeah, sure. That's a yeah. perfect p- moment to Damn ask. Because you had your uh, uh, album launch special, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And then you did your song, first run of songs. Uh-huh. So what you're on now? It must be like season six or so now, if I count them right. I don't know what season it is, but this is episode 48. Yeah. Well, it depends on like which how you count seasons because um, you did one on your own run run one run of seven. Then I did one run before we put it on the air. Then we started doing the <laughs> podcast, and then there's one run that we did between seasons because yeah. we were in two different parts of the country, and then that stopped being an issue, despite the fact that we're still in two different parts of yeah. the country. Yeah, <laughs> but like we've done a couple where it's like been. Uh, you know, offline or like we've done it over the phone, so it's it's all very blurry in my yeah. uh, in my memory. <laughs> well, I always think of them as like uh, seven episodes and a recap. Yeah. So if it's forty eight, I'd say roughly like. But then we have like yeah, special episodes <laughs> of like interviews including, with people, including one episode where we literally just got drunk in beer wolf. Well, I got drunk in beer wolf, and um... <laughs> so I tolerated it. Now. <laughs> yeah. Look, Roger, it's that's about five. Yes, yeah, Declan. Like, oh, it must be like season five or six ish. More or less. Yeah. Something like that, yeah. yeah. But we don't, we've been doing it a Season while. end. Season 5.5. The cool thing is, like, now I can measure, like, what song I'm on by which episode it is, because it's episode 48, so for me it's weekly song 58, mm. because I've been doing it. I don't know quite what the maths are, but I did a run by myself. Like season zero kind of thing. Well, yeah. That's before the thing, you're, well, not obviously. Your, but, uh, your weekly songs 1 to 14 are the songs before the podcast, and then oh, I was joining 14. in. Right. And then I was joining in on 8 to 14. So I know that whatever you're on, I'm seven behind you. But then it just, this is probably bad podcast material, but for 8 to 14 for you and for me, no, 8 to 14 for me was 1 to 7 for you. Yeah. Was that podcasted or not? No. no. So then like 15 to 32 for me, po- songs wise, was podcasted. Yeah, because my first one was God, Rock this and Roll. My brain Life. Hurt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, math. Oh. It's just like. <laughs> All that sort of bollocks. That's still me. <laughs> That's still what I do. Ah. Well, well, it's literally like, oh, that was still when I was in Boundless Brothers. Um, that was still when I was in the band. Um, but, uh, yeah. It's a miracle we have a number system at all, that we know what episode we're on. It's, mm. it's a complete miracle. Um, I'd like to just clarify that you know what episode we're on. I, I, I'm just here. <laughs> I just turn up every week. <laughs> so, do you want me to play my song now or later? <laughs> <laughs> Who's going first? Uh... It's Sammy. Well, I mean, obviously, we pre-show, we we said to you, you know, you have first refusal as the guest, whether you want to play first or not. Yeah. And Sammy's first. Mm. It's going to be good. I'm looking forward to this. Oh, I ha- had an idea, and I have no idea if I'm going to retitle this, because I've called it um, A. Dot Louise, like initial A. Uh-huh. Like a, like a name on a yes. letter. Because I don't know whether... It fits. I was like, A Louise, or just to be called it Eloise. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, eh, you find either way. So we'll see how we go.
Sorry, it's a bit cool. longer than I usually do because I was like, let's just keep going. <laughs> no, that's great. I really like that. It's got a, such a catchy chorus. What I do quite like about that is, um, if you'll forgive me for giving away your your secrets on the chord <gasps> Uh throughout most of that, you're sort of keeping the uh, you're playing on capo, but for argument's sake, G, you're keeping the B and the E strings ringing, which right. sort of masks like some of the identities of the chords, like it. You know, if you just give it a first glance listen, it can sound quite simple. But then looking at your chord shapes, like, there's actually quite a lot of variation in what you were doing there, which, yeah. you know, sort of the G sort of keeps that hidden quite nicely. So you're not thinking like, oh, yeah, this is going all over the place. It's just like, oh, yeah, this has got some movement to it. It's cool. Yeah, yeah. It's like a real constant nice movement to the whole song. But it's, it's weird because I was like, a while back, I was thinking, oh, right, and maybe write into new songs or just change the way I play a little bit. And then most of the stuff I want to learn is like, oh, mostly to do it in open chords or bar chords where it's like, there is some variation. Most of the time it's like very boring or dull. And that's why I like play most of the stuff like that, with the, well, holding the bottom. Because I'm just like, it's more comfy for me. I'm like, that's fine. At the same time, I want to be a better player. So I was like, let's just change up some chords and have some fun with it. And I was like, yeah. Well, it's, uh, um, it's also <laughs> related to that. It's also related to that trick that Dave Grohl tends to do. It's similar, but not the same, where, like, we've spoken about it before, where he'll just let the B and the E ring to grab... Uh, yeah, to add, like, a bit more, like, chordal ambiguity to it. One thing I also love is that... Um, oh, you beat me to it! <laughs> that bridge. Oh, I love the bridge, too. What That's the, great. Where it just suddenly goes to that B flat. <laughs> That was a last minute edition. That was literally on the drive here. Oh, really? Oh, really? <laughs> you hadn't tried it out? No, nope. <laughs> what do you mean on the drive? Did you like mentally think of it? Did you like stop in the car and no, try it out? No, literally, I was thinking about it. I was like, I need something because otherwise it's going to be like. All the way through. And I was like, that's it's fine. But then I was like, I need something. 
Because obviously, if it gets too simple or kind of just stay on, it's like, oh, it sounds fine, but there's no variation to it. Well, because you're sort of out of out of diatonic key and building up to that uh, five on the D chord. When you come back and it's a bit more chill, it has a bit more impact as opposed to yeah. like if you were just to stop because yeah. you've already gone somewhere else, you've come back and it's just that moment where you can just imagine everyone going. <laughs> oh, just like. Yeah. Because the um, reason I've been listening to, uh, you probably don't know them, uh, listen to the Night Flight Orchestra. You've mentioned them to me before. Yes. I still need to get around to listening to them. They're like, um, it has that very kind of. Um, 80s like synth rock style but the chap who sings he's got a really nice voice but it's always backed up by um, like a like a sweeping chorus behind it like female ah, singer yeah yeah So imagine being like, I sing it low, so Hello Wiggies, I never meant to let you go. And in the background, I imagine having it being Hello Wiggies, like just like a small choir or something. I can't even sing now. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I, like, I was gonna move it up, but... Is there a particular song that, that has that sort of like female chorus effect by that band at all? That you yes, there cite? are a few. They have a, like, uh, their newest album has some like. Most of their stuff where it has kind of when it gets to the chorus they do that. And when it comes out to like maybe the first line of the verse and it's just like ah, and then it comes back in and what makes it more subtle, then back to the chorus when it's like everything comes back so it's in. It's like really energetic yeah. chorus. That's awesome. That's a cool production technique too. Cause like I, cause that. his voice it can go higher. There are some set segments, but then it's nice to be like, I'm gonna have it like smooth in the middle where I'm comfortable. Yeah. And it's only just backed up by other well a Choir or like just backing singers, but it's more like fuller. Mm. It's kind it of in. it's kind of nice if you do have that ability to go high and have this really powerful voice, not to just use that all the time because it just sort of devalues, yeah, like the ability to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just devalues the ability to do that and like puts the focus more on like making the notes work. Mm. If that makes sense. Absolutely. Uh, one thing I do just want to ask about, uh, which I always ask about Roger, but I'm going to ask about you: the lyrics. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there any sort of particular inspiration? Is there any sort of particular inspiration for them or like uh, anything you want to talk about with them or? Yeah, it's because I wrote it because I was just thinking about like, uh, about like, trying to describe it. There was someone who I was uh, with for the longest while, like one of my first uh, missuses. Or your missuses. <laughs> one of your missiles. Your yeah. first <laughs> nuclear missile. Sorry. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, that's, that's the term we're going to have to use in our. And it was just like I kind of. Uh, she was in a position in her life where she was like, "I'm going to go and uh, go to university and uh, like move away, like very far away, and do what I had to do." And she was like, "You need to come with me." And I was like, well, "What am I going to do when I go there?" At the time, I was actually working at like a supermarket, and it was just like, "No, no, come on, it'll be fine." And I was like, well, "I can't abandon everything." And then it just got more heated for the next couple of months as she was, like, developing that. So I was just, like... It made me into, like, the worst version of me possible. Mm. Where it was, like, super argumentative. And it, ne it was never... I better say this. It was, like, never physical, but I would turn to a bit of a dickhead mm. at the time. Sorry. Sorry, super No, PG. no, no. It's cool. <laughs> but, yeah. It's the I was, internet. No, but Fuck I was... <laughs> Fuck em. But, yeah, I was just, like, oh, I'm turning to the worst version of me. And then looking back on those times, I'm just, oh, I'm super... It could have been so much better if I would just take that step, but I never did. So I was like, not my own fault. So I was like, oh. That's cool. But I was like, I'm not going to try and reference this person or do anything. That's why I was like, I need to change the name of it uh, completely, like the name of the song that I was thinking of. And I was like, okay, just run that over and just get rid of it. So yeah, it was all right. It's so interesting, isn't it? When like you have a song about a particular person, but because realistically they might hear it you know yeah like you have to kind of like change certain details and like make no them chance. slightly anonymous <laughs> no th this uh, uh particular missus is <laughs> this particular missile <laughs> uh she uh um title that yeah that's it. <laughs> well she, she was one of the reasons that i got into music because she said you'll never be a good singer and i did it out of spite <laughs> <laughs> that's she interesting was, well she's the uh, uh I, I think i know who you're talking about 
and then there was another uh, girl who I was with a little while back before I started doing gigs. She was exactly the same. It was like, we shouldn't focus on it as like, she's not very good. You shouldn't focus on it as a career. I was like, oh, you son of a... <laughs> it kind of reminds me of that Aunt Mimi quote um, that she always told John Lennon, like, um, a guitar's all right for a hobby, but you'll never make any money out of it. Mm. <laughs> Which, um, like, because I feel uh, fair to share this information. You make your money playing music, mostly. Yeah. I mean, you... You have a. Have I have a, a part-time job. What I do with my family, but this is kind of this is now stepping into a point where I, this is going to be my full-time job eventually. Yeah, which you've been doing this for a couple of years, so yeah. it's kind of interesting to sort of work out the origins of that now. Well, it's more fun to be like I did. I did sing before, and I learnt a little bit of guitar for our um, school friend Toby. Oh yes, yeah. Toby. And then I learnt a bit of songs, and I was like, "Oh, that's fine." And then. As I kind of stepped away from having just the like, oh school, and then everyone disperses like uni and co- college and stuff like that, and they'd be like, I'm stuck. I've got still got my mates, and I've got this missus, and she was like, oh well, you know, mm, music isn't a thing for you. And I was like, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Like, uh, just then I had a second go do it, and I was like, how dare you as well? <laughs> so, so yeah, it that's is. the story of uh, a dot Louise. Or E. Louise, but I'm obviously not sure on it yet. Cool. I really like it. It's, it's one of those songs where the melody is so strong, I can imagine it being produced very easily, and that's a good thing. Like, that's the just... thing. Like It suggests how it wants to be produced, yes, which exactly. is, you can sometimes come up for chord sequences and think, what the hell am I going to do with that? <laughs> it's like it's like fully hatched, I'd say. Yeah. Which is, you know, great. But it could be one of those, like, uh, right, one of those, eight, uh, one of the like, synth 80 songs where it's just like, it's no, obviously that's good, and they have solos in it, and have a long like outro where it has kind of waffles on, being like, hey, Louise. or you could do it like really quickly, really like yeah, um, tight. But the idea just have like six minutes and we just shout hey, Louise and just like yeah, <laughs> well, just like one of those coders that just goes on forever. <laughs> I want to be like one of the choruses, like have it play like do the chorus. And as he goes, now you're stuck in my brain. I just want to slide all the way down the next. Eloise. Oh, that's cool. That's that's kind of like but a I production couldn't... thing more than like a something you could add in if you recorded yeah. it. Yeah, but that's why I was like, I kind of need to keep the chords going. I can't like stop and just like slide it down because I don't think it will sound quite right. So I was mm. like, that's one thing I wish I could do. But I was like, eh. yeah, it's kind of like um, what you have a danger of that thing of like losing the momentum like because I'm a little bit of a George Ezra fan and the um, song Ugh. Paradise but, <laughs> sorry but Mom. like uh, does it literally does that at the end of the chorus so <laughs> you feel like paradise running through your bloody veins you know it's like come your way That sort of thing, which sort of kills the momentum when he just does it alone. It's kind of a second guitarist job in a way. Yeah, it is a production job. That's yeah. why I was like, I could try and do it, but then it would kind of throw off what I'm doing at the same time. I'd be focused on too much. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my song. I love it. It's great. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> right, Declan Kitchener, you're up. Off the bat. That's right. This week I have a uh, song, which is good, seeing as that's the point of the podcast. Um, it's called Alone Inside. Nice. I'm so <laughs> depressed. <laughs>
Awesome. I like that. That's great. <sighs> Cheers. That again, you've written yourself one that's hard to play. <laughs> yes. oh, it would be for me, you know. Well, we did have to take two takes of that. Um, they didn't yeah. need to have known that. You could have hidden did that. We? I can't remember. No, no, one take. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> I want to do my deja vu joke. You're scaring me. <laughs> <laughs> my memory's slipping in the old age. Um, yeah, so this song sort of came from. Uh, well, I was. I've been. That's going to make brilliant podcast yeah, for, yeah. <laughs> for listeners. I will put our hands together. I'll try. Let's go. Like, excellent. Yes. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Visual um, gags. <laughs> <laughs> they work so well on the radio. Um, I've been sending you a lot of messages this week, Roger, about how much I've been enjoying the Food Fighters TV series Sonic Highways. Uh, when it was on air, I only got up to episode two. I bought the Blu-ray recently, and I've just like watched the whole lot through. Huh. And there was one episode about LA, which um, uh, had Josh Homme in it, and he said something to the effect of, "If you ever stuck, just remember what you started playing for." I just sort of struck a chord with me. It's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What did I start for? Um, and literally, I just spent the rest of that evening. Uh, this is like with two days to go so spent the rest of that evening just playing electric guitar really loud along to like loads of tracks that uh, I you know learnt initially while playing the guitar and like I always have fun playing if not being the most technical kind of things uh, so stuff like Mildred for example or like Supermassive Black Hole which I can now basically do with my eyes closed uh, but that's really sort of fun energetic heavy stuff uh, which is where the whole chord sequence came from. In fact, that's um, uh, just where that... It was originally just like that, and then I remembered, oh, yeah, I should probably make it a little more interesting. And I was just thinking, well, you know, it was the Queen of the Stone Age episode, so let's just make it a little off. Like... Yeah. Which isn't like what they would do, but it's more like them than what I would normally write. You don't listen to them, but that uh, like little sequence sounds like uh, a Devo song. You're right, I don't listen to them. No. <laughs> they have a song called Go You Want, where it kind of starts similar to that. Like, do, 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 do. like it's like slightly off about it, but it's still catchy. But it's like written in that sort of rolling rhythm. Like, like a drum beat. Yeah, which kind of as a guitar player that's just really sort of fun to improvise over that kind of rhythm sure sure uh which is why like you have like moments like the like that for those of you who can't hear exactly what i'm doing just based off me playing that quickly and rushed uh that's playing that as a g chord and then bending the f sharp to get a release yeah yeah uh so the end effect is and then you repeat that for the outro, which I think is really cool. Yeah, that is designed to have like a band around it, like instead of like being played at a folk night. Pretty much, yeah. And then that's also part of the reason why you have that bit there, because we were talking last week about changing minor chords to major chords. So in the context of that chord pattern, that's F sharp uh, minor, E major, uh, C sharp minor, and then to major, because I just like sticking weird chords in all over the place, to F sharp major, to F sharp minor. Yeah, I noticed, uh, not to derail what you were saying there, but the chorus itself is really interesting in the sense that you go from... Uh, a to E to the C sharp, but then you do loads of different stuff with the C sharp. You kind of play around with it being minor and major and changing the suspensions, and it just creates a really interesting sort of chordal, chordal sound and a really unusual chorus. Well, sort of the reason. Are you talking about like the stuff where it goes. Like all that sort of suspension stuff that's happening there? No, it's, um, uh, you know, obviously you only heard it once. That sort of stuff. 
No, uh, it's, it's tricky, this. Um, it goes A, E, and then you go to like a, uh, like a, a C sharp major, and then minor, and then you do like a weird medieval chord. This is a bad podcast, but... You're playing a lute. <laughs> You're just... playing a lute. Look at him lute. But like, I think I know, because it's around that whole sort of... Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that you, sort of which is what you did before. But yeah, anyway, but I that, really that, like that, it. Yeah, that's just because one of the things I love doing when I write songs is just sticking weird chords in. Mm. Um, and also, our friend um, Chromatic Dissension comes back with the... That's the bit I meant. That's the bit I meant. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's just in there because that's like a cool thing to do. This is essentially the reason everything is in here because it's a cool thing to do. Well, that reflects the whole like, why did you start playing music thing? It's like, because you like rocking out on guitar. Yeah, but that's a descending pattern starting on the major third of C sharp, which is F. Mm-hmm. Also, chromatic the descension does sound like a really like fantasy band, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. We are chromatic descension. <laughs> 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 uh, but then that descension repeats, but over a different chord. So like when you get into the sort of, yeah, bridge bit, I don't like calling it that, but where it... <laughs> switches to an F-sharp major 7 and it's the same descending line from F to C-sharp. Okay. That's cool. I like the way, like, can I just say, I like the way that you got, like, those uh, chromatic descension parts which are then directly followed by dun, 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 like just like the most simplistic rock and roll thing you know it's like a cool contrast between cool one to the other <laughs> we beg your pardon <laughs> he's playing a lute <laughs> look at him loot. <laughs> give me the lute give me the lute <laughs> but yeah that's like all I can say about the music for this one um, what about the lyrics Declan super dark <laughs> in the chorus <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, it's. I talk it, to myself. I don't trust anyone. It was like, oh, cool, thanks. <laughs> well, literally, that's basically it. Like, because the music came out of like, well, what's the cool thing to do? And then um, the words are kind of, why aren't you doing that? Which explains quite a lot of it. Uh, the first line is like, the first couple of lines are a bit weird, but yeah, it's like in the second verse, it becomes more apparent. We have things like. Inside this room, I'm fortified from opportunity and sun. Because like, it's got to the point now where I've got such a small room, I have to use the windowsill as my DVD shelves. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, closing the curtains and everything, like, stacking them high with DVDs. I'm going to so, be like, oh, that's where I put my desk, which is on the windowsill. <laughs> it's like a monitor and a keyboard. <laughs> well, no, my computer's on my piano. Um, as you do. So. As you do, yeah. Just doesn't everyone have a piano in their room? Uh, which sort of gets you into quite an insular mindset uh, and then you just don't go out, you don't speak to anyone you don't try new things which is the only person you end up talking to a lot is yourself, so that's where the chorus comes from. I did try and get another set of words, I was going to try and do like a suicide comedy song, I don't know how that was cool. going to work <laughs> Feeling it? <laughs> <laughs> Why are we have like the darkest past today? <laughs> <laughs> you haven't heard mine yet. <laughs> uh, but I'll just sing you what I wanted the words to be like. Uh, a man, a man who's falling fast can fly, stop him when he hits the ground. <laughs> this is so insensitive. He is in power by the sight, the sensation or the sound. It is going to continue. <laughs> Follow the I think you made the right call. Yeah. <laughs> it was going to continue in that vein for about three minutes, and I just, I couldn't. I, something inside stopped and said, no, stop it. Were, were you going down that path, and then a path I can't follow, um, and then uh, <laughs> and then you just, you just, you were just like, no, and then you just went to a different thing. I just went, no, I'm not dark enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't pull off comedy suicide. Um, <laughs> oh, it's just sort of thought, well, what has that got to do with the ethos of writing... Uh, the music, which is where like the opposition thing came in, like, okay, the music's what you want to do, the words are why you're not doing it. So it mm. felt a bit more like it linked in better. I get that. That's but, cool. 
Yeah, I think that's about all I have to say on. We need to send you on holiday so you can write one happy song. <laughs> <laughs> Just one. That's what I'm asking. He comes back yeah. like, I've been to Barbados. Yeah. It was so sunny. I was so miserable. It's cool. Emotional contrast. <laughs> Why is the music happy? <laughs> it's cool. Emotional oh, contrast. Right. <laughs> Sunlight is on my friend. Yeah. <laughs> now I've got cancer. Um, <laughs> Oh, but now dear. I've also got ice cream as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. I really like your song this week. Thank you. And also, it reminds me of Stop by James Addiction. <laughs> What's funny about that? Sorry, I just love the way like, you go. Uh, yeah, just go, thank you. On. And never mind. <laughs> and also, um, yeah, yeah, I need something else nice to say about this this week. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll have to listen to both of those suggestions that you said that it sounded like and see whether I'm going to get sued for copyright. <laughs> All right, so my song this week, which I wrote in a week, this week, in a week, week, is called Purged by Fire. Well, did you write it in a week, though? Uh, in a week, yeah, seven days, yeah. Just a, just a week? Just a week? For the weekly song podcast. A week, yeah. Okay, a week. No more than that. A week. Right, anyway, okay, this is my song this week, and it's called Purged by Fire, and it goes like this. By fire, a more rocky one for He's me this witch. week. <laughs> Burn him! <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. Thanks. Could you explain that intro, please? Yeah. Okay. So, for the sake of the podcast, I'm I'm actually tuned down to C sharp standard at the moment. Um, but the chords are basically pretty simple for this song. But I wanted to build a riff around them to make it a little bit more interesting. So it's like E major to A major. To B major, the five, back to the one, which is E major. And then you go to major three, which is uh, G sharp major, to uh, C sharp minor, B, A, E, essentially. But I thought I'd try and uh, arpeggiate a few of the chords in interesting ways and sometimes deviate from the arpeggiation. So, uh, you know, instead of just going up the 
chord every single time with octaves like I do in the first time, so... Which is playing the three parts of the chord, because every, every triad, every chord, uh, or major chord, consists of three notes, um, E, G sharp, and B, you know, for an E major chord. So, playing an inversion of that, for that, and then just go to the A regularly, and then for the B, and then here I go to a minor version of the E chord, which is the one, very, very briefly. I was going to mention this in conjunction with something later out. Uh, later out. Later on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that is pretty cool. I like that. That was an accident at first, because it was supposed to be like... And at one, one, one point I went... I was like, ooh, okay, cool, keep You that. can just imagine a band, like, taking that moment, just go... Da -da -da -da, boom, boom. Yeah, well, oh, here's the thing with this song, right, is the reason it's more rocky than my normal writing is because I was like, I want to write a more rocky song this week, obviously. And then I was thinking, the way I'll write it is instead of just, like, sitting down with an acoustic guitar and writing a song, I'll do it in conjunction with recording on Logic, right? So I was thinking... I'll I'll do drums at the same time. I'll record some, you know, sample based drums at the same time and put down bass and electric guitar. So the whole song came together as this electric song. I've come to talk to you in confidence. Although I know you must assume I haven't got my teeth on anything that I could offer you. Yeah, so uh, that was that was that, and then so it has all these kind of like stops um, and you know, and uh, that little lick which I quite like, which again was kind of just an accident of playing around with the um, pentatonic scale. You can get kind of two chords with that, and then just that sort of uh, slide there with sort of like sort double stops. Because you can do that sort of thing all over the neck, but it's just really nice uh, at that sort of area. Or... Because mm. you can sort of very easily create a one, four, and a five basically anywhere with exactly. any inversion. And it's, it's cool to like go to what would just be, you know... I could just play that there, but to have like... That little piece of ear candy I thought was kind of cool. And then, um, yeah, uh, musically, it, it stays very much, you know, basically basic rock sort of stuff, you know, just sort of like playing around with major chords and stuff, very Smashing Pumpkins uh, inspired, I suppose you could say, like uh, Siamese Dream and that sort of thing. Like that's a Butch Vig produced rock music, eventually, uh, ah, essentially. good stuff. The good stuff. <laughs> it is. Uh, and, good uh, stuff. Um, musically, let me think. I mean, it's very straightforward. It's for, like very much like instrumental intro, verse, chorus. Instrumental intro, verse, chorus. But what I quite like, uh, which I was going to mention in conjunction with your uh, thing mm. there, is that you sort of continue that on a little bit into the verse as well. Like yeah. A... yeah. So it's sort of like almost like a repeating idea. Yeah, there's a few things like that in this, and then you kind of have the in inverse of that, um, which is the... Yeah, I was going to say, I love the way you sort of play that and sing it at the same time, which... Well, it's like, it's kind of half because I need to do that, and half because it's like, it sounds cool, but like, I wanted to do the, uh, you know, a suit. You must assume... I wanted to kind of do a... But it's so hard to play... <laughs> All three parts. I mean, look at. I mean, no, it's a visual thing. But look at that chord. It's a. For bugger, reference, bugger what Roger is playing at the moment is uh, open to four one. With the bottom ringing, isn't it? But yeah. It's like a full stretch, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's awkward to try and do it quickly. It's an E sus two, I believe. Um, so, and it was just kind of cool to have that moment, especially when I rocked up the demo to have it like where instead of it just being crashing all over the place, to have one moment that was just like almost uh, like uh, Bach esque or something. Where it's, it's very just like lyrical. One... Wait. You know, just that one little moment that had, you know, not symbols everywhere all over it. So imagine like uh, what you said, like uh, Smash the Pumpkin, more like Cherub Rock, so it's more like. Yeah. I mean, I've been a fan of that band for ages. I mean, you look at the riff at the beginning. 
It's very much. Copyright. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, but I, I love that band, and you know, yeah. it's had a huge influence on me. But I mean, that kind of uh, style, especially because it's like, it's a rock song, but it's not like rock these days where it's just like, yeah, it's just like go fast or heavy. It's just like, well, what I quite like about that style is it allows you to sort of um, uh, get quite a lot out of one instrument. Like Tony Iommi used to do the same thing. He'd sometimes leave the bottom string. Ring. That was meant to be black pigs uh, black pigs what am I talking about <laughs> war pigs mm-hmm. and um, uh, yeah he does that quite a lot there and uh, in songs like fairies wear boots it will just keep the bottom string ring to build up a greater space with the electric guitar mm. yeah it's um, it's a really cool technique and that whole thing about having that pedal going on there you know the lowest string and then on the A and the G strings you've got this octave thing going you can just the sound of these different shapes it just sounds so cool, you know? So that was kind of based around that. And uh, uh, the one last thing musically is that the song was originally written in uh, in E standard, which was ridiculous to play, because it was like, let me just see here. So like, the chorus was like... Uh... Dragged down by the hand, thrust into the fire Which is just ridiculously high to sing, so I tune the guitar. It sounds down. awesome, though. <laughs> but it's like you kind of want to have some oomph when you sing the, you know, the chorus, the first line, like you chest voice. When you record it, it'll be like a, a key change upwards so over to it again, like, <laughs> <laughs> just like an octave voice below. Two octaves lower. One sub octave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The entire time, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that's pretty much all I could think to say about it musically, and I haven't thought of a single thing to say about it lyrically. Purge by fire. That's <laughs> that's, that's a title. <laughs> that is a title. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, okay. So <laughs> I suppose <laughs> I suppose lyrically, it's just the idea of um, recognizing your shortcomings as a person, and um, the idea of um, purging by fire is. Um, Doing things that make you uncomfortable with a view to grow as a person and how painful that can be, I guess. Um, that's pretty much it. And then exploring that in all the verses. It's actually one of my few songs that's about a thing the entire time, you know? As opposed to like six different connected ideas in the first verse and then think, oh yeah, I've got to write a chorus out of this somehow. <laughs> or meeting yeah. someone and then writing them into the song. Yeah. Well, what? Mm. It's like what? meeting all the people, put them all in. <laughs> Like well, a little what pop. Yeah. well, what I quite like this week is that we've all written with a slightly common thread between like our songs. It's all about our own shortcomings in a way. Yeah, mm. I guess so. Damn, this, is most, accident. this is the most on theme we've ever been for an episode of the podcast. Without discussing any kind of theme. Wow, something in the water. Look at age. <laughs> Not sponsored. <laughs> I wish we were. <laughs> we would take good. It's wild cherry now. Not just cherry. Sorry. No, no, no. It's not the first <laughs> well, time we've mentioned that we want to be sponsored. But uh, yeah, they've, I don't, but... they've introduced the Apple Blast one, which I really like. Oh. Yeah, I had it a while back. They had it when uh, <laughs> Shadow of the Tomb Raider was out. They called it Croft Apple. Oh right, I I just haven't seen it around a lot. Oh, you knew. <laughs> Not in the to be fair, city. down in Cornwall, cherries are quite a difficult one to find. Since I moved up to Bristol, yeah. I can find the stuff because I had to keep buying it. Like in Plymouth and bring it back to you, but ooh. Well, you didn't have to. You just kept doing it. I know. I was it. like, oh, well, I'm not cherry. complaining. I'm just, I just, I just want to point out that it wasn't no like I held you ransom or anything. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I, uh, that's why I was wondering if, like, the purge, uh, purge by fire, sorry, purge by fire was like you having like this like burden and trying to like singe it away to move on with yourself, perhaps. Very much. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly what it is. Um, yeah, I mean. You know, um, I think we all have that thing, don't we? Like, where it's like you have to do something that you are uncomfortable with in order to uh, to grow that that part of yourself, no matter what it is. You know, um, and it's just kind of going through that and uh, yeah, but burning yeah, off the old self and hopefully re-emerging as something better. Yeah. And hopefully not emerging with third degree burns. We're all caterpillars <laughs> in the world. <laughs> That's a good title. This was a bad idea. Literal fire is It was drowned out by Fireman over here. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, 
But um, yeah, that's pretty much all I can think to say about the old song this week. I love it, and you are going to have to play us that demo the minute we finish recording. Cool. Okay, well. So that's about all we've uh, got time for this week on the Weekly Song Podcast. Um, if you want to send in a song, or you just want to get in contact with us, or, I don't know, you're lonely and you want someone to email, um, message uh, the Weekly Song Podcast at gmail.com. Weekly Song Podcast at gmail.com. Did I not say that? No. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Do what he said, because I'm an idiot. Um, <laughs> no, definitely. Like, write in if you're just like, you need someone to talk to. After our three songs, we need to talk to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, uh, actually, not... we actually need therapy. We guys. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> this is like the closest we've come to therapy in a while. Uh, just to acknowledge, we have had a couple of things sent in this week, but just because we've had Simon... Uh, Simon? Simon? <laughs> Simon. Simon. I can't talk this week. My, ne- my name's Sim. <laughs> yeah, name's Sim. Uh, just because we had Sam on this week, we haven't really had time to... Uh, mention them but we have read them and we will be discussing them next week uh where can they find you roger rogerheathers.com at rogerheathers on instagram and twitter and uh facebook and new album out now it's on... really good where can they find you declan on soundcloud uh which you can find in the following link description thing uh which is on the side uh brilliant <laughs> words no <laughs> Oh, where, I, where can they find you, Sam? Hey, I hope you're going to do it because it's like, a, <laughs> where are you going? Where are you going? You can find me on all the things at Sammy Jonas Music, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tinder, um, Bumble if you're on it, I guess. Grinder, Facebook, <laughs> <to> Bebo, <laughs> MySpace, <laughs> My Street Beebs, Daily Motion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, all the things at Sammy Jonas Music. Cool. All right. Yeah, definitely look up Sam. He's um, a fan- especially if you're in the Cornwall area, go out and see Sam live because he puts on an amazing uh, live show as well. As I'm all around the southwest now. I'm like all over the place. He's uh, a really good show. I think not this week we're recording, but the following week, uh, I think I am in Exeter and Penzance, and then I think Plymouth. So if you're in those areas, you can find or go into um, my Facebook.com forward slash Sammy Jonas Music. You can check out my events and see where I'll be playing next. Do G3 a week. Do do that because it's a good night out. Is it doo-doo? Doo-doo. <laughs> <laughs> um, talking of Facebook, we have a weekly song podcast Facebook. Um, yeah, it's really there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's really real, you guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, why not follow us on that? Uh, also, why? Um, we also now have an Instagram page for the weekly song podcast, which... Um, uh, which you can just find by searching Weekly Song Podcast on Instagram. Uh, I think that's about it, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Cool. Thanks for listening. Ta-ra. Continue to buy Roger's album. Ta-ra. <laughs> <laughs>